right out of the gate, we've got so much to get to. In particular, the unbelievable lies that are being told to you right now in the White House surrounding Hunter Biden and the fact that there are still, still right now, media that are helping to cover for everything having to do about Hunter Biden. So I want to play a couple of things for you. Uh, This is from the uh, October 22nd, 2020 presidential debate. This is the final presidential debate between Biden and, uh, and obviously Donald Trump. And I want you to listen to Biden say, Neither he nor Hunter has done anything at all wrong. This is 100% a lie. He lied to you. He lied to the American people. Listen. Vice President Biden, there have been questions about the work your son has done in China and for a Ukrainian energy company when you were vice president. In retrospect, was anything about those relationships inappropriate or unethical? Nothing was unethical. Here's what the deal. With regard to Ukraine. We had this whole question about whether or not, because he was on the board, I later learned of a Burisma, a company, that somehow I had done something wrong. Yet every single solitary person when he was going through his impeachment, testifying under oath who worked for him, said, I did my job impeccably. I carried out U.S. policy. Not one single solitary thing was out of line. My son has not made money in terms of this thing about uh, what are you talking about? China. All lies, okay. by the way. The, the, the whole thing. At the peace. whole thing is a lie. The, the China thing is a flagrant lie because we now know his son, Hunter, got $4.8 million. This is not some right-wing conspiracy theory. This is coming out of the Washington Post, New York Times. Everybody is acknowledging it now. Uh, and to their credit, the White House was pressed on this yesterday and said, hey, you know, now that the data is out there, the checks have all cleared, everybody can see that your son got $4.8 million from China, the White House is still trying to say that Biden didn't lie about that answer in uh, in the debate. Listen to this yesterday, play cut five. During the last presidential debate, then Vice President Biden was asked if there was anything inappropriate or unethical about his son's relationships, business dealings in China and or Ukraine, the president said nothing was unethical. He went on to say, my son has not made money in terms of this thing about what you're talking about, China. Does the White House stand by that comment that the then vice president made? We absolutely stand by the president's comment, and I would point you to uh, the reporting on this, which referenced statements that we made at the time uh, that we gave to the Washington Post, who worked on this story. But as you know, I don't speak for Hunter Biden, so there's not more I can say on that. I mean, just total misdirection, Clay. Lies. I mean, lies. Th- this lies. Is, this, oh, yeah. I, I direct you to the reporting. The reporters all lied about this. Mike, here they are talking about Hunter Biden back in the day. There's no evidence that Hunter Biden has done anything wrong. There is no evidence of any wrongdoing between uh, uh, by Biden, by Joe Biden or by Hunter Biden. President Trump has falsely accused your son of doing something wrong while serving on a company board in Ukraine. I want to point out there's no evidence of wrongdoing by either one of you. President Trump wanted dirt on Joe and Hunter Biden. Trump's claims about wrongdoing here are unsubstantiated. We have looked. Lots of outlets have looked. PolitiFact found No evidence to support the idea that Joe Biden advocated with his son's interests in mind. I've never read a memoir uh, like this one before. This is Hunter Biden's book, Beautiful Things. It's breathtaking. It's breathtaking, Clay. Let me just say, that was Anderson Cooper falsely accused. He's asking a question during a presidential debate in which he says, or maybe it was a presidential town hall, I can't remember. But this is when Biden's running. He says, you've been falsely accused. Why don't you speak yes. about this thing? This is the way they play the game. This is how the Democrat apparatus does what they do. And this is bigger than just they were all lying. There was evidence. It was on the laptop. There was other evidence, too. Uh, the, the Hill.com, as I said, John Solomon, when I was working there, broke the Burisma stories back in 2019, not even the 2020 election year. It was known what was going on. They suppressed it. They said it was conspiracy theories. They went on attack. And I think one of the reasons this, you know, there there are two levels at which this really hits home. One is our Democrat-aligned corporate news media is a complete and utter joke. And anyone who ever says in the White House or anywhere else, 
but the journos looked into this is just absurd. I mean, it's ridiculous at this point. But then the other part is this is about a presidential election. They're always telling us all they're lecturing us about integrity and the need to support our democracy and democratic information flow and all this stuff. They basically cheated. I mean, I know it's within the rules, but they subverted the information flow. They decided to stop doing their jobs to suppress this story. And and big tech actually shut down the community. I mean, imagine if a week before a presidential election, Clay, all the cable providers came together and were like, you know what? Not putting any commercials on air for the other guy. Now, you could yeah. say, oh, well, I mean, maybe there's some regulation about this. You say, oh, but that's, you know, those are privately owned things. Cable companies, cable... That would seem to us like it was unfair. It was tilting the battlefield in one direction. It's exactly what they did. Well, and, and this is where I come down in a big way here, Buck. There's a difference between a platform and a publisher. And this is what has been missed time after time after time. And I say this as a guy who owned a media company. When you make editorial decisions, you are a publisher. And publishers are held to a different standard than platforms. Let me explain it simply. If you're just a platform, let's say most people out there are probably somewhat familiar with message boards. If you're just allowing everybody to come on and say whatever they want, by and large, within some you know content-neutral patterns and rules, then you are a platform. Twitter tries to argue we are a platform. Oh, we're not picking sides. We're not choosing what the stories are, are getting attention We just are a platform that allows people to come and share their opinions, for instance. Facebook tries to argue the same thing. But Twitter in particular is a publisher because they decide all the time what trends and what stories they are going to allow to circulate and which stories they are not going to allow circulate, which opinions are permissible and which opinions are impermissible. Buck, you know this. You've seen it with the way that your accounts get treated. Our accounts at at, at Facebook regularly whenever we got dinged at facebook our and i've talked about this under oath in congress uh testifying in front of jim jordan and his committee the number of times that we had stories that were considered to be unacceptable our traffic would suddenly decline by 90 percent at facebook it would cost us massive amounts of money at outkick because suddenly we don't make the ad dollars that we were anticipating you can see it right on the charts oh you did this, and boom, your traffic just falls off uh, yeah. off the pl- it's It's crazy, the power. They are publishers. They're making choices about what people see, when they see it, what they see, and they rigged the 2020 election. They did. 100 billion percent, the tech companies rigged the election in favor of Joe Biden, and now they want to try to argue that somehow democracy's under attack when they are the primary purveyors of that attack. They built these companies promising, promising to everybody. Remember Google for a while was even don't be evil, and then felt like Google doth protest too much. I mean, they built these companies under the promise that they would be free speech, free information flow entities, and then they used to lie for years. They were lying about how, oh, we don't... We don't have a bias against conservatives, and that's not true, or that was a mistake. or And then everyone realized, why is it only happening to people really on the right? Why, why is yeah. that going? And it became too apparent. Then they said, yeah, you know what? Sorry, we call the shots. You guys don't get to actually have free speech on these platforms anymore. And for people that say it's fascinating, the left is always, you didn't build that. You know, where would you be without the government making roads and electrical lines and all this stuff? They're always the government can control anything. And then on this issue, it's, oh, no, no. Big tech Build is sac- your own internet. Big tech is sacrosanct. Build your own internet. You you don't get to say anything about because they just want they're a the- private company. Yeah. That's one of the, my yeah. favorite. They're a private company. If you don't like it, leave. That's yeah. what they always. That, that's the argument all the time. And, and a lot of libertarians are useless on this one too. Libertarians are like Santa Claus. They only really exist if you talk about them too much. So yeah, you know what? And let me say this for the libertarians out there: you cost Donald Trump the election in 2020. There needs to be a libertarian vote exchange. And let me explain, Buck, I've argued this for a while. If you're in a competitive state, you have to make a choice, Democrat or Republican, in how you vote. If you live in California or you live in New York uh, and you know exactly how the election is going to turn out, if you live in Alabama, it's a red state, you live in a blue state, you should be trading, saying, hey, we'll, we'll, if you're worried about libertarian support, in states that aren't competitive, vote whatever you want. 
But if you look at the numbers in Georgia, Arizona, uh, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, libertarians, who I don't know how in the world you could not have chosen Trump over, uh, over Biden, you guys cost the election to Donald Trump by voting libertarian. Libertarians... As, and I mean professional, because I don't want people writing in, I'm a libertarian, I love liberty. No, no, I'm talking about the professional libertarian class, folks, right? In the media, most of them have been either MIA or just worthless on the issue of, of COVID and COVID lockdowns. Because yeah. they live in, in hipster areas and they don't want to upset their neighbors. So they were kind of, yeah, you know, whatever. I guess we got to, science means we have to mask up. There are exceptions. There are exceptions. I have a lot of libertarian you, tendencies, you, Buck, you, but I'm also a rationalist. I, well, I do too, yeah. but I actually believe in liberty. I don't believe that liberty is whatever your neighbors in Brooklyn or Santa Monica tell you it is because you're scared at a cocktail party, which is what I see with a lot of libertarians. But nonetheless, I think back to, uh, back to the big tech role in all of this. The big media, the big Democrat corporate media, uh, lie to everybody about Hunter Biden. And we, that's why we play you those clips. You know, we're not making up. They just completely lie to Well, yes. How is it that Clay and I knew the laptop was real and that Hunter was getting money from China and Trump was saying Hunter was getting money from China and from Ukraine? And the, and the media's response is, that's not true. Well, we or even worse. It. No, we, we we can't confirm it. How hard is it to confirm? Have you seen the photos of Hunter Biden on uh, on the laptop? These would have to be, it's impossible to fake. I'll just say it. It's impossible to fake many of the things that are on the Hunter Biden laptop.